Smart automation, better business. Learn how to optimize your business with Solved. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to map or twin field from the order product to the asset. Specifically on the asset to the asset action source is where we're going to map to. And so if you've been following along in our past videos, we've talked about how to map from the product to the quote line, from the quote line to the order product. And today we're going to be talking about how to map from the order product to the asset action source. If you haven't watched those videos, go check them out. But if you need to focus on this, I will cover everything that you'll need to know here. And so we're going to be mapping from the order product to the inside the sales transaction context definition to the sales transaction item node. Then from there to the asset action source node and from there to the asset action source object. And so note that if you are following along, you already set up this mapping between the sales transaction item and the order product because you set it for input and output. It works for setting the order product field from the sales transaction item. It will also work for setting the from the order product to the sales transaction item. But if you haven't been following along, no worries. I'm going to walk through those steps right now. So jumping into Salesforce, make sure you have those fields set up on the order product and on the asset action source. One thing to note is that I on purpose didn't make them have the same API name just to show that you don't need to have the same API name in Revenue Cloud to Twinfield, which is quite awesome. But let's jump in. You're going to go to the current active version of the of your sales transaction context definition. So whichever context definition is extending the standard sales transaction context definition. You're then going to come in here and edit. And this is a step you may have already done if you were following along before, but you're going to add to the sales transaction item. We're going to add an installation date attribute. You're going to set input and output and make sure it's for a date or that it matches whatever the data type is of your field. All right. And I'm actually going to go back and I'm also going to add to the asset action source. I'm going to add input and output. Let me get a date. I'll save that. And now I need to go in and I need to add the tags. So I'm going to asset state period. And I'm going to find, sorry, asset action source. And I'm going to find my installation date and add the tag. And then I'm going to go to the sales transaction item. And I'm going to add the tag for installation date. And then save that. All right. So now we need to set up the mapping from order product to the sales transaction item node. And so within the context definition, you're going to go to the map data tab. This is where you can find all the mappings. And we're going to go to the order entities mapping. So this is where you can do any mappings from the order or order products to the sales transaction or sales transaction items. So you're going to come here to map. And to make it a bit easier on myself, I'm going to search installation date here and here. And I'm going to come down to the sales transaction item, go click on installation date. And I'm going to find over here on the order item installation date and make that mapping. So it may look confusing because we're mapping from sales transaction item to order item, but since the attribute is set up for input and output, it will also go the other way as well. So I'm going to save that. And our next step is to go back to the 
context definition. And we're going to map from the sales transaction item to the asset action source. This one is a little bit more complicated. We're going to go to the asset to sales transaction mapping. And on that mapping, click edit map. We're going to need to add a data source. For the data source, you're not going to do a Salesforce object. You're going to click on context definition objects, and you're going to add the same context definition that you're using right now. And so scroll down, find the same context definition. So for me, it's price and transaction CD done. And that will add pretty, pretty much a mirror of what you're seeing on the left side. And so I'm going to search here to make it a little bit easier on myself. And we're going to be mapping, not from the, don't make the mistake of mapping from the sales transaction item to the asset action source. You're going to need to map from the asset action source. So right here to the sales transaction item. And so first you need to map the nodes. So you're going to click on the names of the nodes there, and then you can come here and click on the attribute installation date, mapping to installation date. And there you go. We're now mapping from the asset action source attribute, the installation date, or sorry, the installation date attribute on the asset action source node to the installation date attribute on the sales transaction item node. And I'll save that. And our last step is we're going to be mapping from the asset action source to the asset action source object. That is going to be done here in the asset entities mapping. So in the asset entities mapping, we're going to say edit map. And I'm going to search installation date here and install right there. All right. And so you can see the action uh, asset action source node is already mapped to the asset action source object, but we need to map our attribute. So map the installation date attribute. There. There we go. So we've mapped from the asset action source to the asset action source. And then I'll click save. All right. So now it's time to test. Let's jump back into Salesforce where we're going to go to a quote with a quote line. This quote line, if we look at the quote line item, we'll see that antivirus has an installation date on it right here. And so if we generate an order, We'll go to the order and go to the order products. And on the order product, we should see that installation date has been mapped correctly, or at least you should if you've been following along. This is a new org, so I'm going to populate this here because we really care about mapping from the order product to the asset. And so now we're going to make sure we activate the order once activated, you'll go to the asset that was created. You're going to go to the asset action and look at the asset action source where you should see that the installation date was correctly populated, which we see there. And so that's how you map from the order product to the asset action source. Make sure to go check out our other videos on Revenue Cloud, Agent Force, and how to automate your business. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to help you automate your business. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more.